Good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Chanel Marias, and I would like to welcome you all to our live webcast. The focus of our webinar today is what's new in Microsoft's Dynamics 365 October 2020 release part two. Yes, we are back again sharing important details of new features, but this time we will deep dive into insights, customer voice and power platform. On that note, I will now pass it over to Angelina and I hope you enjoy the presentation. Thanks, Sanella. So I know I've already been introduced, but uh, here I am again. <laughs> I always like to mention uh, for those uh, on LinkedIn, feel free to connect with me there. Shoot me a message or question if you'd like. I certainly can't guarantee my response um, on there. You know, I do try to look at it, so I will try to answer you. Um, but I appreciate any messages and connections on there too. I hope you've got your coffee, your tea, your water uh, ready, and I'll try to keep this a little shorter than uh, usual. It doesn't always happen. Um, and of course, you know, keep it a little bit entertaining. Before we move on, uh, since this may not technically be Wave 2 material, I do want to mention some of the terminology changes you may or may not uh, have seen yet sneak into your environment. Uh, so for those who do any of the configuration in the back end, and if you've certainly been using the new Power Apps portal, uh, quick examples being, you know, we often refer to entities and fields. Well, uh, for those of you in the back end, you may start to see those labeled as tables and columns uh, while customizing. There are certainly a few more, uh, just some uh, quick terminology changes that Microsoft has been enabling. Uh, so if you have, not gotten into using the new Power Apps Maker Portal for most of your configuration needs. I certainly wish you good luck and positive vibes on your journey. Um, it is a new experience. I'm quite a fan of it, and we'll of course enjoy it more when it, when the transformation is complete. Um, but that's kind of all part of the, the unified interface transition, um, and kind of saying goodbye to that classic view and classic customization area that we're used to and uh, moving into the whole Power Apps Maker portal now. So for today, we're gonna cover a lot of the insights. So that's sales insights, the customer service insights, the customer insights. Um, we went over the sales, marketing, and customer service apps in the last uh, part one. So these were some of the honorable mentions at the end of that one that we didn't quite have enough time to get into. But just like the other apps, uh, there's quite a lot we could talk about. So, you know, I always say we're, we're just scratching the surface and really trying to bring your attention to some of the key updates. So whether you and or your organization are actively using these solutions or applications, sorry, uh, or not, if something intrigues you, that is where I would suggest you go and read up fully on the feature um, or the application and what updates are in store this season. Um, also customer voice and then a bit of power platform at the end there and then we'll get to the questions. Okay, so for those not familiar with uh, Sales Insights, it provides AI capabilities for accelerating sales, you know, building better customer relationships, automating tasks, and guiding organizations to really pursue the opportunities at the right time and, of course, with the right context. Uh, you can also tailor the coaching and uh, learning to your organization. Sales Insights brings together you know, sales information uh, via the Dynamics 365 um, applications and communications via Microsoft 365 relationships with LinkedIn and, you know, co collaboration with, uh, or sorry, via Microsoft Teams. So a lot of integrations with all these different uh, Microsoft products. Microsoft certainly does continue to focus on um, supporting volume selling in the applications, relationship building, time saving, data automation, and of course, just an overall improved usability. Um, so that's just enhancing that user experience within. So we'll start with some of the advanced forecasting and pipeline intelligence. So that can really help the sales team target their top deals with predictive and uh, sorry predictive lead and opportunity scoring. So these intelligence scores 
no doubt help guide the sales team on where they should be focusing resources, time, uh, and effort. So while this includes enhancements to the overall scoring and snapshot experience, um, if you're not familiar with that, that's certainly a feature to, to check out. One key item I do want to mention is actually related to the infrastructure. So the predictive scoring um, and some of its related fields will now be stored in a dedicated entity or table, as I mentioned the terminology changed earlier, uh, instead of being part of the actual lead or opportunity tables. So you might have been familiar with some of those uh, lead score, lead update fields directly within lead and opportunity. Well, now it's uh, its, its own separate uh, table linked to that. Conversation intelligence. So that's all about taking the large mass of you know, conversational data that organizations have and certainly continue to store and actually turning it into something valuable and useful for the organization and, and the uh, business users. So with continued AI advancements and the natural uh, language processing, conversations can be uh, not only automatically transcribed and, uh, and analyzed for their content, uh, sentiment, and behavior style. So a lot of really neat AI um, related pieces within there. The new sales accelerator experience is really targeted at um, inside sales teams working at a contact center or, you know, in today's world, working remote as part of a contact center. The unified workspace is meant to bring more of a simplified experience in CRM along with those AI-driven uh, pieces, so prioritization and uh, an automated sales sequence. So what will be really neat to see next year, uh, even in preview, is I think it's, uh, I wanna say February or January, February preview mode first, um, is the automatic intelligent assignment for leads and opportunities. So often we see organizations, um, they either have a dedicated triage team or management that has to be in the system and is assigning leads, opportunity records, uh, to the right people. Well, this is going to help kind of eliminate that task or or the amount of manual involvement and put it more as a um, intelligence feature so that, that those tasks are being automatically done by the system. Relationship intelligence, uh, that certainly helps sellers, you know, identify, uh, build and nurture those relationships with their customers. So for this release, it's really just extending the scope of communications to include uh, those customer-related calls and uh, any online meetings from teams. So that's pretty cool. Customer service insights. So this, of course, still uses AI, uh, machine learning, and of course, business intelligence and sorry, business intelligence. Uh, to help those customer agents and managers know what's happening, why it's happening, and what could happen, so the predictive part of it, so that they can, you know, in turn, uh, make the right decisions, uh, take the right actions. So beginning with this release wave, uh, the insight-centric uh, features will be much more integrated right within the customer service apps, so like your omni-channels, your customer service app, or hub uh, instead of just in the standalone insights app. That's one of the key things. In part one, um, I did mention a couple of these items, but I certainly want to bring them up again. And those are the agent suggestions. So that includes agents getting similar case suggestions uh, and knowledge articles so that they spend you know, less time themselves digging for the right information that could help them uh, as they're working on a case um, and resolving that. Also, uh, AI-driven topic generation and topic clustering, uh, historical topic clustering features, they have been uh, improved and expanded upon. So existing features, but obviously enhancements to that every, every release. Now, customer insights is a beast in itself. Uh, I'm not gonna talk too, too much uh, about customer insights. Uh, and that's because we do have our, our most recent webinar as well that went over, the, or that was devoted to this. But the, I do wanna mention um, 
or sorry, I want to mention the audience insights capability uh, and how it's meant to aid in building, you know, that deeper understanding of the customers um, by connecting data from various transactional, uh, behavioral, and observational sources to really create that 360 degree view. So for those that are already using customer insights, uh, some of these uh, terms will certainly be familiar uh, to you. If you have not already looked into this though, I highly suggest it. Also take a look at our um, other webinar that's devoted specifically just to customer insights. There's changes to activities uh, and adding additional semantics, uh, data ingestion, unification, and enrichment. Um, it really is all about that data. Uh, these sound like fancy terms here, but you know, customer insights can only do so much uh, without data. So that's one of the uh, priorities here with this. Uh, there's improvements to segment capabilities and the machine learning powered suggestions. So again, a lot of AI driven machine learning um, pieces in here or features. There's honestly a lot going on with customer insights just because of the product itself. Uh, so Again, if it's something organization is looking into or even or already using, it's certainly worth uh, the deeper dive into its capabilities and the updates, the additions, uh, as well as enhancements. So this, in, this also includes the uh, pre-released information on what's called engagement insights. So I mentioned the audience insights uh, capability included in customer insights. Well, there's also a second piece now, engagement insights. Uh, it's currently in preview mode, so you can read up on some of that information. Hopefully that's a, a yummy carrot I just dangled for some uh, people uh, that are interested in this or already using it. But again, I certainly suggest uh, having a peek at the um, other webinar that was specifically for customer voice, because it is, it is quite an application and certainly support the organization on its own or as part of the other uh, Dynamics 365 applications. Okay, on to the lovely customer voice, formerly Forms Pro, for those who maybe were on that. Uh, I'm really glad they did rename it. I certainly like the uh, customer voice. It has a much better ring to it and certainly falls in line with the other applications. It's a great feedback tool or application, sorry, I should say, um, to keep track of customer metrics, uh, to stay on top of you know what your customers value, how they see your products, uh, and services, and allowing the organization to respond in a timely manner when needed, which is you know key to customer loyalty and just better overall customer service. So collecting feedback. So this relates to sending surveys across multiple customer engagement channels. So in addition to the email survey, web embed, and QR code, you can embed surveys through Omnichannel for customer service, which is yet another application. Uh, furthermore, there's the feature to send surveys to Dynamics 365 marketing uh, customer lists and select segments within when distributing those surveys. So kind of a, whether you wanna call it integration or not, but uh, working with those other um, applications that your organization might already use, whether it's for customer service with Omnichannel or for those in marketing using the Dynamics 365 marketing application. Uh, insights and follow-up. This refers to um, the standardized customer satisfaction metrics. And of course, insights, the term we just keep referring to. Um, this could be you know, the trends and suggested follow-up actions to address uh, any issues that um, a customer might have. Uh, this does also include real-time alerts to notify the correct users when feedback is received in a certain range uh, that the organization sets. So that's a really neat feature there of getting that real-time alert to the right business users um, so that action can be taken. And you know that does also relate to how the organization sets what is the, the right range of you know, what can be seen as negative feedback or feedback that at least requires some sort of action um, on the organization's part. We did uh, just talk about customer insights. So of course, there needs to be 
integration uh, with it, considering the type of data you can get with two applications, and of course how useful that can be to an agent. So just coming upon that um, kind of platform-wide integration between the different applications, customer insights working with um, or within the different applications on the Dynamics platforms, um, also standalone, and then of course customer voice being able to uh, integrate with that as well. This, I actually do have a nice little uh, screenshot just to give you a little example of what that looks like. So you can see here on the screen, um, this would be an example of um, a user being directly within the customer voice application. But if the organization also has customer insights, you don't have to be hopping between the two necessarily. Uh, you can see that integration there on the right where it's popping out some of the customer insights uh, related pieces there. So a nice way to, to stay within one app but get information um, and you know machine learning, AI-driven uh, insights right within here. Well, I know it can be cheesy to say, um, but you know, last but not least is the uh, Power Platform. Now, I, I don't want to dive too, too far into this, um, but as always, I do like to mention it because it's not, I don't find it's always evident how the Dynamics 365 applications are kind of or essentially part of the Power Platform. Um, you know, you hear the Power Platform term, you hear Power App, it really encompasses a lot. But um, of course, the Power Platform has even more to offer uh, for those who may not have or don't even require a Dynamics 365 application. So it can be its own standalone uh, product uh, within. So the following will be kind of similar to part one, uh, where I ended with some honorable mentions um, that if you use or you know are interested in, your organization is interested in, um, there's actually a completely separate document uh, and online content or online page uh, dedicated for this release uh, wave two plan and this specific uh, product. If you've already read through the super duper exciting uh, 500 plus page dynamics release plan, uh, have no fear. You can still get another 100 or so pages to quench your, your knowledge thirst in the Power Platform release document. So there's actually two separate uh, release Wave documents as well as online um, pages or sources related to this. And if you did read through the Dynamics release plan, kudos to you. There's a lot of information there because of the amount of applications. Um, but if you haven't yet and you didn't see part one of the uh, release wave two sessions here, I certainly recommend uh, going back to part one. Okay. So the power of platform and of course digital transformation, they just go hand in hand. Uh, it's a term you have no doubt heard over the past few years is just organizations going through digital transformation. Well, I mentioned Dynamics 365 is basically a part of this. Uh, the specific products within that make up uh, the power platform uh, would be Power BI, Power App, Power Automate, and Power Virtual Agents. Uh, for those within the Dynamics 365 uh, workspace, Power Automate is certainly something uh, that's no doubt on your radar as that's been replacing the, um, the workflow processes that we've been so used to. Uh, you'll opt in if you're trying to build any new processes, um, sorry, if you're trying to build any workflows within that process section, you often get that um, bar at the in the ribbon that, that recommends moving over to Power Automate because that is where those automation pieces are moving. Uh, a couple of add-ons too, I just want to make you aware of if you ever are looking within the Power Platform. It also includes um, the AI Builder and Power Apps Portal. So those are kind of within this Power Platform here uh, as add-ons. The bulk of the updates are related to Power BI, Power Apps, and Power Automate. But I think that's really just because of the nature of the product. Um, but Power Virtual Agents have really been coming along, um, and the AI-powered bots are, are quite something to interact with and configure. So I'm suggesting you check that out if that is of interest um, to you and organization. 
So I'm not going to go too much into the details because, to be honest, um, all four, but specifically the top three here, um, making up the bulk of the Release Wave 2 plan has quite a bit uh, within each, especially uh, Power BI and Power Automate, I will say. Uh, because Power BI, you know, there's Power BI Desktop, um, there's other data related and access points within there. Uh, there are updates within each of those uh, platforms of Power BI. Um, so if that is something that your organization uses, the updates will probably be more related to different uh, user roles. So, you know, those who set up the dashboards, those who deal with the data, those who maybe just ingest it, um, the updates within Power BI, um, depending on that the role that you play um, and how you use Power BI, the updates uh, coming or that have come just the past few months um, will be catered more towards each role. So I won't be going into each one of those, but really just trying to uh, bring light to the fact that the Power Platform what it entails, but also the fact that it is its own release wave plan document. And um, it is, it does kind of go hand in hand with some of the Dynamics 365 updates that we often focus on as, uh, as a company. So please do check these out um, if they are interest. But I will go to the next slide here. While that certainly brings us to the end um, of the 2020 release wave two webinar series, um, I do want to say there's a lot coming down the pipe this month uh, and into early next year um, with all the different products. So I realize it can be really hard to keep track of. Uh, there's a lot of information to ingest. But if you are looking for specific information on a certain product, so whether it was Dynamics 365 related or how I previously mentioned the Power Platform products, please do reach out to us at Serum Dynamics. Uh, we're happy to help. We're happy to point you in the right direction. Um, as I said, if you connect with me on LinkedIn and you just have a quick question or a message, comment, feedback, uh, I'm happy to answer within there as well. Because there is a lot of online content, I realize it's often hard to find that information. Um, so even if you're just looking for the release way plan that you can kind of review in your, in your coffee breaks throughout the weeks, um, that's something we can send to you too. It's all online. There's also the downloadable PDF. Um, but yes, for those who maybe are afraid of the, the uh, search results you can get when looking into that, because there is quite a lot, please just shoot us a message and we are happy to help.